Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode from the Pixelmon Let's Go server. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I am having a fantastic day. It's time for us to take the next step in breeding, in breeding competitive Pokemon. So, uh, we have, so far, we have done plenty of breeding for stats, for IVs, right? So we've got uh, all sorts of different Pokemon that we can breed. Uh, and get perfect stats. Like, for example, if we look at our... All of these guys, these are all perfect. They all have perfect IVs in the way in the way I want. These are all perfect, etc., etc. But it is time to start breeding for moves. Now, I should probably stipulate, if you are new to breeding, or if you're getting into breeding, or anything along those lines, it is generally better to breed for moves early in the breeding process. I kind of made a little bit of a, well, I shouldn't say it was a mistake, but I pu I've put it off much longer than I should have. I should have been breeding for moves pretty much right from the beginning um, because it's a lot easier to do it that way. Uh, and I'll explain why in just a minute here. But basically, the idea is when two Pokemon love each other very much, they breed, they make a baby. With this we already know. We've done this for quite a good portion of this series. However, the parents can pass on certain moves to the baby. And sometimes those are moves that either the baby wouldn't be able to learn in any other way, or maybe they would be kind of hard to learn because they might be from like a like a TM or something like that. Or it's also possible that they would be able to learn the move, but they wouldn't be able to learn it for a long time because it's a like a late level up move or something like that. So here's how it works. First of all, uh, there are what are called egg moves, and those are basically moves that the only way a Pokemon can learn that move is through breeding with a different species of Pokemon. Uh, or if it already has the move learned, we'll get we'll get to this. Uh, we'll we'll come back to this because that's what we're going to work on for today. Um, also, if a father knows any moves that can be taught via TM or technically HM too, I suppose, but t basically TM moves, the baby will learn it. If the father knows TM moves, it will pass those TM moves down to the baby uh, if they are able to learn those moves normally, right? If both the mother and the father know a move that the baby would learn eventually by leveling up, the baby will get those moves as well. So that's how you can get, for example, I don't know, like, um, uh, what the, I can't think of, a pharaoh seed, right? Pharaoh seed is a good example. That's how you get a pharaoh seed with gyro ball at level one, even though it normally doesn't get that move until I think level 20 something. So that's another thing. Not super useful in traditional competitive Pokemon, but very useful in what we're doing here on the server, where we're saying you can only use Pokemon up to this level for the tournament, right? That's how you could get a Pokemon that um, maybe it's only like level 45, but it knows a move that it wouldn't normally learn until level 60 or something like that, just as an example. But let's get back to egg moves, because this is kind of the important bit. So. Egg moves are moves that a Pokemon can learn, but it can only learn it through breeding with a different species. So, here's a good example. I have here a Cranidos. And what I want to breed is I want to breed Larvitars, specifically Tyranitar, which is what it will eventually evolve into. Tyranitar is a fantastic Pokemon, uh, has been a huge threat in just about every competitive metagame since it has been introduced. It is a beast. It's not quite as good as it used to be overall because um, of some things that have been changed as far as like new stuff introduced that counters it fairly well. Um, but it's still a top tier threat and it's one of my favorite Pokemon because it's just super fun to use. Uh, I do love all the pseudo legendaries, which it is. Uh, so yeah, Tyranitar, fantastic. One of the big things that it's very good at is you uh it's it, it's what's referred to as a pursuit trapper pursuit is a move that deals a ton of damage to uh an opposing pokemon that is switching out so basically the idea is tyranitar comes in against something that would lose badly to tyranitar 
Your opponent tries to switch that other Pokemon out and you kill it with Pursuit. Um, and it's very good at that because Pursuit is a dark type move. Tyranitar is a dark type Pokemon, so it gets stab bonus and it's really powerful to begin with and it just hits really hard. So um, it's a very good Pursuit Trapper. However, Larvitar slash Tyranitar does not actually learn Pursuit from leveling up or from TMs or move tutors or any of that kind of stuff. The only way to get Pursuit is through breeding. And one of the things that it can breed with is Cranidos, who learns Pursuit at level 10. So if we fight this Litleo here, let me just, wow, that was actually a very strong headbutt. Uh, either way, we killed Litleo. Cranidos gains a bunch of levels. We got him up to level five. We'll probably fight uh, a few more guys here. I don't really want to fight like all the guys. Also, I, I just realized, you know, since the update, I don't think I've actually seen an Audino out here and they used to spawn all the time. So that may be one of the things that they changed. Let's just get a little bit of this stuff going there. There we go. Heal up a little bit. And then we'll just uh, we'll just fight a couple Pokemon to get Cranidos up to level 10, which I believe is when it learns Pursuit, if I am remembering correctly. It has been a little while, um, but I think that's the case. Let's just, uh, you're, you're a wimpy Nidoran. Sure, you're an evolved Pokemon. You should give me a decent amount of experience. Level nine, Trap Inch. We're almost there. Probably one more good battle, if I can find a worthy opponent. <laughs> uh, not over here. Where are all my Pokemon? There, there's like nothing over here. Where'd they all go? Oh, there's something. The uh, Shinx. Yeah, pretty weak little Shinx, but I think we can still do it. And Cranidos has grown to level 10, and now it knows Pursuit. So, now that it knows Pursuit, and it's a male Cranidos, which is important, because if I was breeding, if it was a female Cranidos, it would make a Cranidos baby, not a Larvitar baby, right? So we need it to be a Cranidos, um, uh, we need it to be a male of the species. Uh, I'm just gonna take these two out of there. Might as well grab the rest of these eggs. The reason I'm taking those two out is because I need the I need the destiny knot. Actually, no, no, no. I don't need the destiny knot. I'll take the destiny knot from these skitties instead. Um, breeding. Currently breeding. Put you back. There we go. Let's come over here. And we'll just say no to those. I don't need to breed more of these guys. Okay. So that's all good. So now... We'll swing over here temporarily. I'm just gonna throw these eggs into the first box. I will hatch those later. Okay, so we'll grab the Chansey. Wait a minute. I just realized I messed this up. I do still wanna be breeding Chanseys. Well, do I really need to be breeding Chansey? I probably should be breeding. I don't know. Well, I'll sort that stuff out later. For now, let's just grab the Everstone and the Destiny Knot like so. Okay. So now we have a Cranidos that knows the move we want. And we also have a female Larvitar that is otherwise perfect, except for the fact that it doesn't know Pursuit, right? So what we can do is we can give the Everstone to the Larvitar, so it will get the Jolly Nature. We'll give the Destiny Knot to the Cranidos. And we will put... Oh, wait a minute. I gotta put them into the PC where they belong. Uh, let's put you here and you... That's, that's a male Larvitar. Probably would be a better idea to do the female Larvitar? Just a thought. <laughs> good, good job, self. Uh, anyway. All right, female Larvitar, male Cranidos. 
and then we will put those two in here. They are capable of breeding. So if we right click, falls madly in love. Love grows rapidly. They will eventually make a baby. And that baby will be a larvitar, male or female, one or the other, but it will know pursuit. Now, the reason I say that it's good to do this later, uh, or I should say earlier in the overall breeding process is because this Cranidos does not have perfect IVs. In fact, I don't think it has any perfect IVs. This Larvitar is otherwise perfect. The baby is unlikely to be a perfect baby as far as IVs go. So I'm essentially, because I've waited to do this until after I already had a perfect Larvitar, I've, I'm essentially starting over when it comes to breeding for, our, for IVs. Not completely starting over, I can make it go fairly quickly, but I'm gonna need the babies to know uh, Pursuit as well. And then now, once I get Larvitar babies, the Larvitar babies will know Pursuit. If I add them into the breeding process, the babies will get Pursuit because they have a parent that knows it. But yeah, this is something I should have done before I started breeding Larvitars. I, the first sets of babies I made should have been Larvitar and Cranidos to get the move that I wanted. Um, but now I basically just wait for these to hatch. And as I get more and more Larvitars, they'll all have Pursuit and eventually I'll be able to get perfect Larvitar babies that have the move that I want. Pretty cool. All right, guys, I am back and I am about to hatch our first uh, Larvitar egg that has pursuit. Hey, there we go. And it is a male. So this means a couple things. First of all, A, we can swap this Larvitar out for this Cranidos and the baby will still know uh, pursuit. The other thing we could do, let's just look. Uh, I really don't have that many. Oh, here we go. There they are. The other thing we could do is we could pair this male larvitar with one of our female uh, larvitars over here, and it would still, uh, the, the, the baby would still know pursuit as well. And I think that's probably a better option for us. Let's grab maybe. I don't know, this one. Um, and then I know I can take these two and steal the Everstone and the Destiny Knot. We'll put one onto you and one onto you. And we'll put you into, let's see. Male goes there, female goes there. I just realized I've got my flawless Chansey here is not breeding at the moment. You know what? This is fine. Let's actually put those guys up here and we will get them going as well. So now we're making two babies and both babies will now know pursuit. If we look at this one, this is the one that we just hatched. Oh, you know what? I just realized I forgot to actually name this guy. Let's grab you. He is in slot four and his IVs are 001, 001, jolly. And we'll rename and then put you back. And if we look at his moves, you can see he knows pursuit, which is exactly what we want. So that's basically how you do it. The other one that I want to do as I would really like to get some, uh, I'd like my chances to know a move called Heal Bell, which basically removes all status conditions uh, from your party. So if anyone on your party is burned, poisoned, paralyzed, whatever, it will actually heal the whole team of those status conditions. And that is a move that is learned by um, Skitty. So... Thankfully, I actually am already breeding. I, I'm already breeding chances with skitties. So all I would have to do to get that is take these skitties right here, these male skitties, and just bring them to uh, somewhere to just level grind them up until they're high enough levels to actually get heal bell. And then they'll be able to pass that down to the chances, which will be fantastic. Also, I should mention, um, Egg moves, the moves that can only be learned through breeding, it doesn't matter if the uh, if either parent knows them, the babies will know them. 
So if I have, if I make baby Chanseys, even though Chanseys are only female and can only ever be female, um, any Chansey babies that those Chanseys make will know any egg moves, like Heel Bell, for example. So I'm going to take these guys to the uh, the haunted tower over that way, and I'm going to get them breeding up. Um, and we are going to, or I'm going to get them trained up to, I think it's like level 37. They learn Heel Bell, which is uh, a ways, but it's doable. Uh, and honestly, this Talonflame could use a little bit more experience anyway. So I'll probably take them over there, do some level grinding while I'm waiting for these guys to breed, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, I am back. I've got our next batch of stuff breeding here. Uh, we've got three Chanseys breeding. Uh, pretty easy to just look at them in the PC. These guys, the skinnies, I raised them all up to level 37, so they all know Heel Bell, which means they will pass Heel Bell down to the new Chanseys, which is great. Uh, and then over here, I have four Larvitars all breeding, and all the babies produced here will know Pursuit as well. So we're actually getting somewhere. The egg moves, uh, we're, we're getting there. Um, progress is being made. This is a good thing. So now what I need to figure out is what other stuff I want to breed for egg moves and what I want to breed in general. I when I on my way, I think it was my way back from the Haunted Tower at some point very recently. I did get some new stuff. I got here we go. I got a Bagon. This guy will ultimately evolve into Salamance um, and Rockhead is his starting ability. But when he evolves into Salamance, it becomes uh, Intimidate, which is a fantastic ability in competitive battling. Naive Nature, which is not great. I'd ideally like probably a Jolly Nature on this guy. Um, but we could, uh, I do want to breed these as well. I definitely want to be able to breed all the different pseudo legendaries, of which Salamance is one. And I finally got a female Gibble as well. I've been trying to get one of these for a while. Uh, Jolly Nature. I've had two males with the Jolly Nature, uh, and it could have uh, I could have bred them with uh, Dittos and stuff. But I think uh, we got this going, and we can start breeding them pretty soon as well. I'm, I'm getting kind of an idea for that Dragon Gym Leaders uh, thing, the, the the Dragon Gym Team. <laughs> I want to make the dragon gym at some point um, and I can kind of go over most of that. Let's just put you in here for a minute. And I wish I could put my entire team into a PC box, but that's fine. Uh, let's just grab you and put you in there temporarily. OK, so for the dragon team, I'm thinking maybe Tyrantrum as one option. And then if we go back to Dragons. Here we go. Uh, definitely Dragonite. Definitely need to do some breeding to get to there. Uh, definitely Hydragon or Hydragon. I've always said Hydragon, but apparently it's Hydragon. Um, Going to be either Garchomp or Tyrantrum. One of the two. Definitely Salamance. I'm thinking a Gudra. And then maybe... Dragalge is actually not a terrible choice now that they think about it. Dragon Poison would be great against Fairy. And Fairy is definitely going to be a problem. So maybe Dragalge as the fifth member. Maybe we do something like this or like this. I mean, obviously, these guys will all be fully evolved and all that kind of stuff. Or other dragon options if we go putting these ones back. Just there we go. Swap those uh, other dragon options. There was also uh, do, 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 do. Altaria, uh, which evolves from Swablu, could be an option. Flygon uh, would not necessarily be bad, although between. Well, I don't know. Maybe Flygon would be better. It does have levitate, which is ground immunity, which is great. Um, yeah, this might be an option. Um, so Flygon's an option. Uh, Altaria is an option. 
Uh, Noivern is an option that evolves from Noibat. I mean, there's a lot of good dragon options, obviously. Pretty much all the dragons are at least barely good. Uh, I'm also thinking maybe I do like a Mega Charizard X as my Mega Evolution. Otherwise, other Mega Evolutions would be... Uh, Garchomp gets a Mega Evolution. Salamence gets a Mega Evolution. And I think that was it. Uh, Altaria does get one. Actually, Altaria becomes Dragon uh, Fairy type, which is just hilarious and awesome. <laughs> so that maybe that would be the option. I don't know. I've got a couple different things, uh, ideas that I'm playing around with and trying to figure out like where I want to go. Um, I know for sure I definitely want to use um, Dragonite. I definitely want to use Hydragon. Um, and... I definitely want to use Gudra. So that is three for sure people on the team. Um, but after that, it's, then it's kind of a, a little bit more of a toss up. Um, but anyway, it's something I am working towards. I, I do love Tyrantrum. He is one of my favorite Pokemon and he is a dragon type. Although to be honest, I don't really think of him as a dragon. I mean, he's, he, he's will you not let me? Oh, right, right, right. It won't let me because I need to have a Pokemon in my party. Um, I think of him as a T-Rex. He doesn't look very dragony to me. He's super cool. He is like one of my favorites. Uh, like, just look at this. Just look at this guy. This guy's a beast. And also, I'm pretty sure this one is only ordinary size. Imagine how big this guy would be as if he was like huge or ginormous. Like, the, the, he's such a big... He's one of the biggest Pokemon uh, model size. Like, as far as the, the size of his model in Pixelmon, um, he's huge. <laughs> uh, so he could be really fun to use, but he, he he's a very big boy. But anyway, guys, I'm going to keep breeding away and working on this kind of stuff. I think I am going to go ahead and call this episode right here. Uh, we're getting very close to the point where we'll be able to open a new shop. Uh, I want to, I definitely want to open my perfect poke shop uh, in town. And we're kind of getting to the point now where I have enough different Pokemon that I can breed uh, perfectly that it's actually worth opening up a shop. I mean, at this point, we got Snorlax, we got Axew, we got Larvitar, we got Chansey, we got Tyrant, we got Ghastly, Skarmory, Ferroseed, um this guy, but Venipede, <laughs> his name escaped me. I used him in the last tournament. I couldn't remember his name. Tangela, Kangaskhan, and Chimchar. Um, Chimchar, I just actually got from Nebris a little while ago. I gave him one of my perfect chances. So we're actually getting like a fairly decent selection here. And that, that selection is only going to continue to grow over time. So yeah, I'm thinking perfect poke shop opening in town very, very soon. I just need to kind of come up with a build for it and figure out how I want to make it look and how I want to lay it out and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, guys, I am pretty much out of time for this episode, so I am going to go ahead and call this one right here. My friends, if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below, so check that out as well. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, I have started a Pokemon Omega Ruby Nuzlocke series as well, so check that out if that interests you. But other than that, my friends, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.